And welcome to another edition of uh, Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. For most of you, or maybe some of you, hadn't seen the program before, we here we talk about a lot of issues concerning the military and veterans. And uh, we have a guest today that's going to share some of his experiences in the military and also what he's doing to help to change the world uh, through his community efforts. But first off, what I wanted to bring to a viewer's attention is in the past we had members of the uh, Branch 46 Fleet Reserve Association that came on and um, there was an effort afoot to uh, save the location. And we wanted to have uh, President Tom Berger come on to explain how the situation is going and what um, what the future holds for Branch 46. Uh, Mr. Berger, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you doing, Calvin? Fine. Let me call you Tom. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, like so we had a lot of guests that came on to talk, a few of the officers from the uh, fleet. Uh, could you give us an update on what's happening and a little bit of history up to this point and what uh, is about to transpire? Okay. Um, the little bit of history is um, about a year ago, well, almost 10 months ago, I took over as the president of the FRA mm -hmm. and um, had a pretty daunting task of trying to save our land and save our building All right. and help out our veterans as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, the efforts have, have produced a lot of good results mm -hmm. other than come this Monday, if we don't finalize or get a, an extension from the Navy, mm -hmm. um, we will be having to close our doors. Mm -hmm. The Navy has told us they're going to put a lock on Monday morning, and then uh, we'll okay. be forced to move out. Okay, I know you mentioned it's, a, it's been a very daunting task for you so far to get as far as you have. There has been some issues in the past that, of course, you're trying to address to uh, rectify. Is there any ch chance that as far as national headquarters, are they getting involved in any way? Or is this something that you could uh, do? Is there any support that's coming forth on your end that will um, stave off the, the closure? Um, as far as national, we reached out to national. And the FRA, there's, there's many FRAs throughout the country mm -hmm. that don't physically have a building or a home. Yeah. So the having a building here in Hawaii was kind of a luxury to us. Mm -hmm. And because the FRA is more of a charter and what we can do for the community other than having a place. Right. Um, so as far as national was standing, national wasn't, they weren't going to help us out financially in any way mm -hmm. to help save something. Cause if they did that, they'd have to do it throughout the nation. All right. Um, it was an obligation they couldn't take on. So we were, kind of in a, in a way having to um, forego things on our own. All right. Okay. Um, the question that a lot of people may ask in the health, the doors do close down there. The entity itself, Birch 46, um, they may not be at the, that physical location, but will they continue? And like say again, if they do continue, what changes do you foresee happening, like say to make sure that whatever has transpired in the past does not happen again? Uh, we, if we do have to close, well, um, our charter is still here in, in uh, Hawaii. We'll just have to meet once a month as board of directors and go about our business as, you know, trying to help veterans as much as we can, but we're just not going to have a physical site to do it from okay. unless we can rent, rent a place or something like that. Right. Um, <clears throat> To prevent things in the future, um, as soon as I took on as the president, I went and hired a third-party accounting service to stave off any improprieties, mm -hmm. and we're going to continue to do that and um, just let just let our members know that we have taken action on uh, on the with those steps. Okay. Um, I know, Alexa, you've been pretty busy trying to get things together today, uh, making uh, last-minute um, efforts, Alexa, to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen. But just in case, for those who uh, in the community who had donated money to the uh, Save the Land uh, Foundation, is there any way can they contact you, or is there somebody that they can contact to find out what distribution or what's going to happen, like say, with the monies that they had donated?
Yo. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to say <laughs> oh, they, the people that <coughs> there, there are there if there are people that are concerned about that, they are they are more than welcome to contact me. I'm sure that you have my information. Mm-hmm. Um like I have like we have discussed before, you and I. Yeah. Um I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it as an open book. If yeah. people have questions, I can answer those questions. Great. Okay. Well, Tom, I want to thank you for you know taking the time to come out. I know it's difficult, you know, what you've been going through, um, but I want to do my personal note anyhow. I know that you have worked your Macaulay off, like say, to do what you could. There's other people out there, like say, are just as concerned, and I know that uh, there's been a mounting um, a lot of opposition in certain different ways. But the only thing I can say is, like I say, just keep up the good fight anyhow and do what you can. And like I say, coming out, being honest about what's happening, um, quite sure like a lot of people do appreciate that. And like I say, as far as the numbers, we'll make sure we get that out to them. But if in the meantime, if they want to call the Fleet Reserve Association down on Walkenburg or go down and check things out, uh, I guess there's a standing invitation to open doors. That is correct. Um, okay. Anybody's welcome to come down there. Mm-hmm. I spend the majority of my time down there trying to see what we can do. So if they want to come in, just ask for me, and I'll be more than happy to sit down with anybody that comes comes okay. through the doors. Anything else, final time you want to say before we go? Uh, just one last note that if we do get our extension, um, we're going to make a, an absolute press and give it our full 100% effort to make sure that within that time frame that we do save our land. Great. Okay. So thank you, Calvin, for having me on today, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. Keep... Okay. All right, thank you. All right. I was Mr. Tom Berger, like say, the branch president of uh, Branch 46. Many of you may not know or may not be familiar with the location. They're down on Walkenburg, right across from the fire station. But um, if you do have any questions about what's happening, contact Tom and or just drop in and... Um, see what's happening here. But we'll keep you abreast of what's going on if there's any finalization with the doors you close permanently. But anyhow, thank you. Okay, to first off, I want to thank my guest, Mr. Shelby Billionaire. Aloha, thank you, Kevin, for having me on the show. Okay, Appreciate my pleasure to him. Uh, first off, a little bit back to your background, because one of the things we're going to touch on is, of course, your service and also what you're doing in the community to make it a better place, not only here locally, but even, like say, in a much broader area, like say, the world in general. Okay, so if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, military background, and then we'll transition into our other conversations. You got it, boss. So I brought some of the, the stuff I have with me for some people who know me who I grew up here in yeah. uh, Waianae. I went to Aya High School, graduated the year 2000, so mm-hmm. Y2K is me. Mm-hmm. I was in the 169 ACWS, for so that's Wheeler Army Airfield, for people that know that spot. We do 2E2, which is Computer Cryptographic Network Switching Systems. Mm. So people who uh, don't know what that means, that means before Bitcoin was born, that's me. Satoshi Nakamoto, ore desu yo. Nihongo mo shitabe dekiru da kara, ore wa katta. Okay. So because we're doing this, and that's why I speak Japanese, but we also do linguists because we travel the world, as we know, as veterans. So I came back here home, uh, been in New York about seven years, Mm -hmm. because out in the East Coast, you know, we hustle, we move fast. We're going to beat you, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, every day. We do the slight edge, we do everything, and now here we are today Mm -hmm. to make the world a better place. Okay. Your visit, your time on the mainland, of course, you've seen a big difference between there and here. What do you guys do? I guess you got a better appreciation of the, I mean, if you were born and raised here, the thing is, you do see that, that difference, that the economy or, you know, the change up. What gave, is there anything that gave you a better appreciation of what we have here in Hawaii? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Well, you're going to love the beaches here because it's free. If you go to New York, the beaches are dirty, it's ugly, Coney Island's got all kind of plastics inside, mm-hmm. and people have to pay for parking. Just go to Walmart parking, like around here, it's $20 if you don't buy something. Yeah. Like, this is crazy. Now, now it's all about profiteering. Because yeah. if you're in the business world, now you're just thinking about profits. You don't start a business to write taxes off. Mm-hmm. You start a business to make profit. Right. So if you're starting the capitalism, like Donald Trump was my mentor. I went to Trump University. Mm-hmm. I went to also Rob Rich Dad University. You know, yeah. I went to Nouveau Rich. So I went to all the top three real estate investment you know, education companies mm-hmm. to try to make the world to how to be financially free. Mm-hmm. So I came back home. I wrote a book, starting a philosophy of how we can do this. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's where you start to learn the appreciation, how to make this full cycle, how do you be harmonious, yeah. but still live in a practical world, because you still got to pay bills, gas costs money, sure. food, groceries, and, uh, and here we are today. Okay. Thing is, you're, we just met recently, mm-hmm. like say, but you seem like a very dynamic individual, like say, full of energy, life, the everything that you seem like you're willing to share with other people. 
other things that you are involved in, you know, briefly we can talk about that. Then the other thing I want to talk about that tie in as far as with Hawaii, the history, and your perception of how things are, how to bring things back into kilter. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, so uh, I just got recently recruited, not by choice, but by divine chance, by Auntie Connie of the Wine Eye Lions Club. So she put this pin on me. So now I'm in charge of the Lolo, and we're doing with uh, my buddy Lion Kenny Simmons, the Walk for Vision and Hearing. If you didn't know about the Lions Club, we're the world's largest uh, nonprofit organization. Okay. So everything you donate to Lions Club International mm -hmm. is 100% used for that organization. If you donate to Girl Scout cookies or some other things, mm -hmm. sometimes the girls were only getting like a quarter when the whole thing was 325. So there's been a lot of things going on there. However, they're ripping off those poor girls. Yes, from? exactly. And yeah. that's why you can't really trust a lot of people. The people, when you're dealing with the rich people, right? Because I serve yeah. Justin Bieber, our pound fist, Justin Timberlake. We'll talk about drinks, margaritas, yeah. and we'll be fly. However, we come back and bring it back to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, people who aren't educated or haven't got further up or haven't traveled mm -hmm. aren't used to the hustle. They're not used to what people are doing. People mm -hmm. take it very personal here. Mm -hmm. And I want people to look beyond that. And that's what Helen Keller was pitching, uh, the Knights of the Blind. That's what the Lions became. Mm -hmm. So it became Knights of the Blind and Beyond to be crusaders against darkness. So right. if you're believing in Helen Keller, who said life is short, eat dessert first, mm -hmm. you know, you can start to think like about Gandhi, about spirituality. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Because we know as vets, if we go to war, or if you saw the anime Naruto, you know if I drop a bomb on you, like Hiroshima or Nagasaki, are you really going to try to explain to a Japanese ancestry about this? No, right? So we don't go into this stuff because we know it's just going to create more war. So what we're trying to do is create love and do the aloha spirit where the Hawaiian spirituality comes right. in. Right. Okay. I know how to create, when you're talking about creating love, that's good. But sometimes, like I said, as far as history is concerned, there's a reverberating thing that happens throughout history, cause and effect and everything else. What I would like to talk about also is the fact that worse being you're politically motivated, you're involved in a lot of things. In fact, you're ready for president sometime soon. Yes, sir. I already found my paperwork. It's on Instagram. Everyone can find it at yeah. the Legendary Billionaire. Mm -hmm. And I found last year, I contacted Tulsi, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, everybody to say, let's work together. Mm -hmm. Do they email back? Do they respond back? I also emailed all the senators here mm -hmm. and the YNA Neighborhood Board, the Community Board. Everybody knows my name. Mm -hmm. But do they respond? Mm -hmm. Do they call them back? No. You called me. We met Chance. Mm -hmm. And here we are. But all of my work is uh, documented on Olelo. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Olelo. Okay, that's one of the things that I, I try to um, really promote here as far as awareness. As again, like I said, we have a lot of people in the military that want to give back. And with the different ethnicities that we do have in our military, we have different perspectives. I know that at some point, like I said, you're deeply concerned about what's happening in the past history with Hawaii, what some of the things that may, um, let's just say, we're not just, okay? What are some of the things that you're trying to do with whatever organizations or as an individual? What are you trying to do to enlighten individuals who are not familiar with the Hawaiian culture, you know, about what's going on and how it's going to benefit all of us by making either the acknowledgement of certain indiscretions on the part of our government? That's a deep question, but I can handle it. Um, so... Uh, a lot of things are coming towards you, right? So what the problem is, is a spiritual, it's a spiritual problem we're facing here. Like my mentor, Wayne Dyer, was saying, right now we're focused on ambition, the ambition to meaning. Hmm. So right now people are focused on how can I get more, how can I be number one, I want the most gold medals, I want the biggest tower. Hmm. But people forgot, our physical bodies are finite. You cannot keep this body, you're hmm. going to leave it. You know, in 100 years, 200, doesn't matter, you're not going to be here, you're hmm. going to die. Everyone's going to die, I hate to tell you this. But, and that's where people forgot. What, what really matters is the food, the air, the water, the mm -hmm. love you breathe, you know, the, the memories you have. Mm -hmm. And that's the Hawaiian aloha mm -hmm. culture, because you're not going to keep this stuff. True. People have been following this materialistic way the whole time and copied the American culture about consumerism. Mm -hmm. So now we're 90% consuming because mm -hmm. we're taking everything from China. Mm -hmm. Plastics are polluting the ocean. We just became the greedy people. Yeah. Speaking of finite, we have a finite amount of time right now. We oh. have to take a short break. But we'll come back and continue our conversation because, again, as far as what you're trying to impart, I think is extremely important. Uh, stay tuned. You're here in Hawaii in uniform. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. 
Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Okay, you're back with Hawaii uniform, and again, the first uh, the first for me. I never had a billionaire on my program, but we have Mr. Shelby Billionaire. I know that the, you changed your name. Let's talk about, like, say, what your original family name is. So those who know your face, they may not never recognize the uh, name change. A little bit about the, your family. I uh, got you. So everything's in my book, Spiritality. So mm -hmm. I started as Brown, but I dreamt of becoming a billionaire. So I went and studied Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm -hmm. you know, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, T. Harv Eker, and that's how I got into this path about learning about options, stocks, real mm -hmm. estate. But I realized nobody cares about how much money you have, especially in Hawaii. We just don't care. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Jason Momoa, that's a name to people. We mm -hmm. don't really care. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you still got to eat. You still got to go back home. Sure. You still got to pay groceries and stuff. So we're trying to do things is how do you still live practical? Because mm -hmm. even though I'm a presidential candidate, what are the real politicians doing? They should be here trying to solve, you know, the world issues, the, po the pollution, the problems. We're doing aquaponics on the West Coast. You know, helping people vision here with the Lions Club. But I also want to help the Hawaiians because we're losing a lot of land. Yeah. One of the things that we mentioned about, um, of course, giving back and all that, the political aspect of it also, because one of the things a lot of people are not happy with either party, you know, and the one thing as far as getting more independence involved, you know, because I see there's a lot of common sense solutions to a lot of problems, but it's either you're with us or you're against us. That's the attitude that a lot of the, uh, political, par the political parties have. If you're... Um, it, the attitude they have, if it doesn't serve me, it serves no purpose, you know. And the thing is, we have to start working together. And I know, like, say, with the spirit of Hawaiiana, all that, like, say, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, we try to live. I know, again, making that transition from the past to the future and possibly back as far as with the attitudes, you've done a lot of history as far as with the Hawaiian kingdom. Some of the things that, um, again, didn't uh, pan out for the Hawaiian culture. But I see that you have a copy of King Kalakaua's Will. Tell us a little bit about that, how it ties in as far as the, the making the um, corrections that need to be made. Gotcha. So uh, I want everybody to go to the Hawaii State Capitol. There's the Hawaii's Public Access Room that has everything you can file for all the Senate bills and everything you need to contact your senators. Mm -hmm. So everyone can find everybody who they need to talk to to help there. For the Hawaiians, all the Hawaii State Archives and our history is recorded there. When I went to the Capitol, Washington, D.C., to look for the Kalakawa's will and the Bayonet Constitution, you cannot find this. I went like national treasure. I am an otaku. I will research anything and figure out the truth. I was there. Veterans do not give up. Mm -hmm. So I went like a secret mission beyond like 0069, and I got in there. Mm -hmm. I went to both Congresses, and they all sent me back home to the Hawaii State Archives. They said, this stuff is deleted. I said, really? So I got the Bayonet Constitution, and I got it certified, and I brought it back. So what this means to people and veterans, if you are Hawaiian, if you'll notice this signature and the seal, it says Kalakaua Rex. Yes, you heard Rex, just like T-Rex. Now his name is David, it's not Rex. Now Rex means king, uh, back in Old English. Mm -hmm. But if you sign a contract, that's not his name. So your contract is invalid. Mm -hmm. So if you're just looking at international or constitutional law, we have a lot of memorandums. We have the will saying that all, everything and the estates should go to Queen Kapiolani and her descendants into perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So even Queen Kapiolani, all her descendants, all the family, should be having the land back. Mm -hmm. But we're not getting anything back. But yeah. the problem with the Hawaiians, it's not, it's not only Hawaii. The veterans have to understand they did the same tactic to Puerto Rico, to Guam, and now they're doing the same kind of coup-like things to Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And we can't stop it, which is why we have the Article 5 Convention, the high five for Article 5, to have the Convention of States to get the people back together so yeah. the people make their own power. A lot of people are not aware of our history as far as the country is concerned. We see where we're going into other countries, like saying the name of democracy and things of that nature. But as you mentioned, we got Guam, Puerto Rico, and a few other territories that 
the indigenous individuals they are not allowed their own destiny as far as they're not allowed to vote for president things of this nature anyhow you know and i think that that's something that really bothers a lot of american veterans who uh -huh. are of these different cultures like why are we doing this like say we're supposed to be the good guy but yet and still we're not addressing like say the individuality the cultural respect for these other cultures okay what you know, one thing i think that concerns a lot of people in fact, if they're not of Hawaiian ancestry, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, we want to, if we want to do the right thing to help to promote this, how is it going to impact us? Is it going to take away from us because we want to be part of this, part of the, um, the, it seems, uh, what, the scenery, I say scenery, that's a bad word. Anyhow, part of the, the overall Hawaiian experience, okay? So what do you have as far as, the individuals you're dealing with, what you're trying to um, bring about, or get the awareness, what would allay the fears or concerns of individuals who are non-Hawaiian, know that there's something that's wrong, drastically wrong from the past that need to be corrected, what can they do, but again, how is it going to impact them? Uh, yeah, so to simplify that, uh, I would get the kumus, the nice grammys and grandmas, okay. and grandpas. The grandmas, the female mana doesn't have hate, like the male war mana. The kane okay. wants to kill. They think about, I'm better than you. This is all about ambition. Okay. This is a spiritual problem, because now you're chasing after fiat currency. Okay. You're chasing after power. Now you're chasing after things they can print unlimited mm -hmm. through the Fed. If you read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, you know about the money problem, about fiat currency, which is why J.P. Morgan's also having his own Bitcoin, mm -hmm. J.P.M. But mm -hmm. you can't just make up your own coin now because now you have to follow our crypto which is what i'm certified at for cryptographic networking switching systems mm -hmm. so if you're in that field for all the veterans you're going to kick butt you're going to do so well if you start doing crypto businesses because mm -hmm. that's allowed in all 49 states all puerto rico except for hawaii so the finance committee all those people you actually have to call them you actually have to get involved with the hawaii public of director of officials it has everybody's email mm -hmm. you can even email tulsi gabbard right here her email is right here in these books yeah. But if you care and for these issues, you have to get involved. If you are not involved, and this is how the tri they, they trick you. This is what I realized as we went for these Senate bills. They have these Senate bill hearings at 9 a.m. or 1 p.m. So if you are working at a job, you cannot come here to the, to the Capitol to stop these bills. Yeah. So the corporate people are winning. Facebook just mashes through because they have the attorneys. Yeah. So the only way you can stop this or get involved is you have to become involved into this hearing, into the Senate bill legislative stuff. But if you're not part of it, doesn't matter if you're Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, they're going to take it all. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, um, we noticed that when people start learning the rules, they change the rules. They make it difficult. You know, the one thing, the hypocrisy that I see sometimes within the system is they say, we want you to get involved. We want you to be good citizens. Then when you show up, either you're berated, you know, or you're trying to intimidate you, mm -hmm. things of that nature mm -hmm. anyhow. And people lose faith in the system just because of the way they are treated. You know, how can you support a system when you know personally that you've been impacted in a negative way and discouraged from being part of the solution? You know, but yeah, information is the key. And the thing is, when there are individuals who can't, most individuals are busy trying to take care of their life, trying to get things together. But Individuals like yourself and a lot of other unsung heroes in the state of Hawaii and around the country are trying to go ahead and make empower people through the information. Information is power, you know. And the one thing that we all have to do, if you have information, you want to share it. The thing is, you don't want to share misinformation. That's another problem that we have when the fake news, things of that nature. And as you talk about, you know, with the economic systems and everything else, good. This real world that we have to go ahead and deal with. The bitcoins, all the crypto things that you're mentioning, and everything else. But I think again, what you're trying to also stress, and don't want to put words in your mouth, but the thing is about getting back to the basics, being individually and communally self-sustainable. So in case there is that big, big EMT attack or whatever it is, or something happens that goes down, we still have that sense of community, and that will help to fuse us together so we can better survive through all the other things. Right, and you got it right, Cal. Like all the vets know, like even though we just met recently, everybody knows, can feel our mana, our manao, our store, feel what's going on. But we all want to be prepared. We all want to come home. We want to relax, have a nice home cooked meal, 
get a nice massage, soak and have a hot bathtub if possible, and relax yeah. and make sure our kids are good. But now we have to figure out a way, how do we do it on our own, through yeah. our own communities. So through the Lions Club, we're trying to do some aquaponics. We have the high schools going, why not high school, not cool elementary? Because mm -hmm. now the future is teaching the keiki, teaching mm -hmm. the children. Because we're not going to be here another 100 years. The Hawaiians have been losing for over 200 years. Mm -hmm. So how do we make this as a foundation to create a better planet for everybody, to help heal the world and make it a better place? But you have to start with healing yourself. True. Then you start healing your ohana. Mm -hmm. You know, can you pay your bills? If not, then you'll start slowly with that. Start growing your own food. Lettuce takes 30 days. You know, go start growing seeds. You know, teach the kids how to, you know, care. So if they grow their own lettuce, their own tomatoes, they make their own salad. Mm -hmm. Can you afford Whole Foods $14 organic salad with avocado? Mm -hmm. No, because I will sell that to you. Mm -hmm. In New York, I'll add sake, I'll do everything. I'll razzle and dazzle you, and I'll suck the millions out of you to fundraise. Yeah. But that's not what it's about. It's how do we change the world, make it a better place, and more people should be getting on this program mm -hmm. or getting involved and just taking care of their family. Yeah, true. That's a road we all need to go down. And also, like say, speaking of road, I noticed this big stick that you bought, and I was wondering what that's about. We're getting down to the wires, but briefly, if you could tell us what this is about and what it represents. Great, yes, this is the Divine Royal Hawaiian King Kamehameha Holy Sanctuary Holy Staff of Life. Mouthful, right? Uh, it was blessed from the top of Mount Fuji. You can only get this stamp by the priest, uh, 2014, but I did it extra. From New York, I also got uh, young Aquaman, Keikoa design. We have Chief from the Maui, Keomoku Kapu from the Hawaiian Royal Line. From the Catholic line, Master Deacon Aokai, his birthday is today. We also have the number one Japanese priest, Nakabayashi Sensei, signed. Deadpool, Weapon X, a Cosmic Ghost Rider, Vemin, Incredible Hulk. So everyone has blessed this journey and will go to the top of Mount Akea yeah. uh, next to help free the mountain. Because that was the most sacred place for Kamehameha, yeah. where he worshipped Lono. Right. Lono could be Akua, we say in Hawaiian, okay. or Jesus Cristo. Right. Okay. For Christianity. I was going to say you might need the rock signature on there, but uh, I don't do too flippant about it anyhow. I would tell you, we're almost down to the wire. I think we may have about a minute or less. Uh, uh, is there anything finally you'd like to say? I want to first off say thank you for coming in. I see, again, being as energetic as you are, you're trying to do a lot of good things out there. But real brief, you have any contact information or something that you'd like the audience to know before we go? Yes, I would like everybody to be the change they wish to see in the world, just like Gandhi. If you feel the aloha, spread the aloha. The same energy you have is the same energy you give. So if you feel love, happiness, light, you're going to share that. So I want everybody to be happy, but you've got to find a way to finance yourself, you know, grow your own food, start being self-sustaining again, stop using the plastics. I know McDonald's is cheap, it's easy, but we've got to find a way to be healthier, because right? a lot of people have diabetes. I saw they had for 50%. And it's not good. So we've got to be healthier by becoming happier. I love people to have to drink more green tea, hot water, so you can, we can lose the beer belly. And uh, yeah. that's it. Okay. Uh, Anyhow, I want to thank you for coming on the program. I'd like to do a follow-up. And also, I know that you do a lot of things out there in the media on your own. But, um, yeah, keep us abreast of what's happening. And, you know, keep up the good work. Anyhow, at this point, I just want to say thanks again to uh, Tom Berger for coming on. And, again, check out the fleet. And also, Mr. Billionaire for coming and showing up. But also... Remember, we're in this thing together. We need to work together. The Aloha spirit. God bless. And until that time. Phew. Aloha. <laughs>